Hey guys, so last week I left you off with just the uh, build of the motherboard, the graphics card, and processor, and just a, an external build. So now we're going to be uh, putting this all inside this white NZXT Phantom case, which you see right here. So the case itself is a pretty nice case. I mean, it does have, I think, like four fans already installed. It has one fan up there on the top, which you can see right there. Um... There is no real glass on it. Uh, it's mainly constructed out of uh, plastic. There's not a lot of metal, uh, but it's a harder plastic than most plastic. So up top you see all the fans, the control, the reset button, power button. There's kind of like a blue light coming out of there from uh, my windows, but kind of looks about the same as it would if it were on. It emits kind of like a blue light. Over here you see the vent. Uh... It's got okay ventilation. I mean, if this was glass, it would probably have pretty bad ventilation, but because of the vents and the dust filters, it's a little bit better. There you see the fan control, which I do show in the video, uh, late in the video. Uh, overall, it's a pretty nice case. I think it was like 130 bucks on the Black Friday New Egg sale. So here is that uh, top fan. It's, I believe, 200 millimeters. So it's going to get quite some ventilation. Um, I will admit, now that I'm using it right now as I'm recording this, uh, it is probably one of the loudest fans I've ever heard. It's really loud. Here you see your eSATA, USB, your um, regular USB 2.0, USB 3.0. You see uh, the headphone jack and the audio jack. So that's what's going on over there. And the power button and the reset switch. Um, for some reason, I don't think mine came with the reset switch cable. I don't really care because I don't use the reset switch. I'm probably never going to use it. Um, but for some reason, I looked all over the place and I just didn't have a reset cable. So I could not plug that in into all those Molex adapters and all that stuff to get it to work. So I, I can't even use that switch. But um, I don't really care that much. I mean, I already had to go through a lot to get this case working. Originally, when they sent this case to me, it had no screws and no manual, so I was not able to do anything. Uh, all it has was the screws to hold it together. There were no standoffs or motherboard screws, so I really was helpless. And either way, if I did have everything completed, I wouldn't be able to put it in here. So see, uh, here's where you put, say, your uh, disk drives. Put uh, Well, right now I have, two Blu no, I have one Blu-ray and one DVD. Um, what's nice about having that is just so you can... When you have multiple ones, you can do multiple CDs, and especially when you're uh, installing the software, it helps to speed things up. Um, so that's really what's going on with the case. So now we're going to be taking off the front panel. As you can see, there is two fans right there. I'll go put that off, and right here, uh, two fans. So um, they're not very large fans. You can put a fan right there, and that's a dust filter. So they do work, and you can put one. Here you have these screwless uh, drive uh, enclosure uh, snaps or hooks or whatever you want to call them. Uh, this is part of NZXT's new logic of having everything as much as possible without screws. So these you simply unlatch and you'll be able to move your drives in and out. And there you see the two fans and they're working pretty well. Then you have four grommets, so it's not that much space. Uh, but there you have your hot swap bays. Um, so you have quite a lot of them. I mean... You probably would never need that many. I am only using three, and I might be using a fourth, but I only have one SSD and two HDDs. So I, I have three terabytes of, of HDD, 1.5 each, and then I have a 128 gigabyte SSD. So I'm not using nearly as many as they offer. So now I'm going to be showing you guys just one of the first steps, uh, which is pretty obvious, installing your power supply, because without this, nothing works. I install this first just because it powers everything and I can connect everything to it once it's in. So right under it, uh, specifically for my case, I can up mount this upside down because in my case I have a little opening on the underside of it uh, to allow ventilation and air. So that's why mine is upside down and that's working pretty well. The only thing is now that when I turn on the power supply I have to push down instead of pushing up, which is kind of weird but it is still working pretty well. So I didn't show you myself putting this into the uh, the motherboard, into the computer uh, case because it is pretty simple. And now this is just the, the standoffs. While you're watching me screw in the standoffs, uh, I will have to say that um, 
on the back of the computer where you have all your ports when they gave me for uh, this motherboard when they gave me that um i guess i don't know what really to call it it's just the thing that all your ports go through so when they gave me that i installed it and when i installed the motherboard it was practically snapping and what i mean by snapping is it was bending outwards so that little cover for all my ports is not really fitting well um my ethernet right now i mean i can't fix it because then i have to take everything apart and i did not have a solution for this because it just didn't work so i felt that i didn't really need to fix it only a couple ports were not working and i could definitely get around that especially because i have 3.0 ports uh, uh, away from that and a 3.0 and 2.0 port on the top of my computer but either way I can't really use my Ethernet that well. I mean, Ethernet is connected, but when I'm using it, um, if I were to touch it, uh, not lightly. I mean, if I touched it lightly, it would stay still. But if I were to touch it uh, or try to pull out, there is no lock. The lock doesn't work, so I, I can pull out the Ethernet without unclicking the latch. So that's only one slight thing. Now, I have to say for this NZXT uh, Phantom case, it's kind of a downer that they did not uh, install the standoffs before I actually received it, so I had to install it myself. Usually people decide to install it themselves. Um, it's not a bad idea. It's just that um, it would be preferred for uh, the company to actually send it with the actual uh, standoffs inside so I don't have to worry about all that happening because it get, does get pretty annoying uh, these standoffs I had a ton of trouble I spent half an hour on one standoff um, because you have so much uh, user I guess control in this case because they let you have all the configurations ATX micro ATX all the other configurations so they had to label it and a bunch of my screws my standoffs did not go in straight so it's just something that what you have to consider when you're building this are you willing to go through all that or do you just want to have this set up so you can just go through it but um personally it wasn't too bad once i figured out how to get the standoffs to go straight a lot of them weren't going flush but then i eventually figured it out so this is just finally slowing it down and that was one of the last standoffs and uh for the standoffs actually i was missing a standoff so like there were a ton of things that could go wrong when i did this uh luckily um my motherboard doesn't really need it I did use a different screw that I had lying around, but it was eventually, uh, it did work eventually. So I decided to take off my uh, CPU cooler, <coughs> my CPU cooler, because it uh, needed to be readjusted. I didn't think it was receiving the right amount of thermal paste. I thought I put a little too much, so I just decided to put that on, and that seemed like enough. Um, I read a lot of forums, plus the Noctua actual, the Noctua uh, paste, the thermal paste, on the actual cover of the box told me that I should only put that much and nothing else. So I'm going to go with them uh, because this stuff is pretty strong. Um, so I decided to just put that much. And then I mounted the uh, Hyper 212 uh, Cooler Master cooling fan up there, which you're about to see. And then I selected that, put it right there, and then... Uh, that's basically what happened. Then I screwed it in, obviously. Um, it was a little bit harder to do it when it was inside the case, but either way, it would still be challenging to screw this in or put this in with the uh, motherboard when I put this in because it is a pretty large fan. Uh, so it would be hard to get it in either way, so I just decided to do it that way. So here you see my power supply, and this is the main stuff connected. We have the graphics card, my uh, AMD Radeon 6950 connected. All the PCIs are connected. And that's my motherboard. Everything is connected. So here we have the uh, actual computer on. None of the fans are connected except for the CPU cooler. Uh, as you can see, my motherboard is on. And I'm in BIOS. But uh, that's all that's really happening. So I did get it to work. It worked on the first try. Uh, I did run into problems later when I was connecting all the kind of stuff. For some reason, uh, random ports were not working, so I had to fix them. Find fine solution. So here you see the uh, front fan. I mounted that, and that is a 140 millimeter at um, something RPM. It's pretty fast. It's also an NZXT, so I decided to completely NZXT my uh, fate, uh, my case, because NZXT. I figured that most of the fans were NZXT, so I just decided to get the other one to be NZXT. 
So all these fans are working. Uh, well, I didn't turn them on, but they're all connected right here. I'll show you later them spinning. But um, so here we have just some ports we got to plug in. And it's working well. Um, did have to spend quite some time. And I did do cable management. As you can see, this cable right here. I later uh, cable management and I went over that. Uh, so this is just a shot of all the stuff uh, from this angle, which is this angle is near my front fan. So this is from the front of the case. And what you're looking through is where I put my two uh, drives. So I put my DVD and my Blu-ray in here. And uh, that's where I went. I can put three more. I don't know why I put three more, but I do have that option. And I certainly will consider that in the future. Probably won't need it, but I might just in case. So now this is drawing to the end of the video. I was installing Windows, so this is just a sneak peek of things to come. Uh, the Windows is a sneak peek of things to come. Uh, that button right there turns on the blue LEDs. Uh, I personally don't care about the LEDs. I mean, it's bright, at, plus it's under my table, so I didn't really need it. Here you see every single connection. Uh, all my three hard drives are connected. Um, this is installing on my SSD, as you can see right here. And that's basically it. So I will show you my setup in a uh, couple of seconds, but from there, I'm just telling you guys, yes, this is a computer. For those of you guys like, no, you didn't build this. I mean, like, how could you say I didn't build this? Some people are saying I didn't build this, but yeah, I think it's pretty obvious that I built it. But uh, anyway, so that's what my desk looks like. That's my uh, little gaming rig, and people are saying this is not a gaming rig, even though it's obviously a gaming rig. But, yeah, that's a gaming rig, and for those of you guys saying it's not, well, you can guys can just go sit in the corner and be happy with your Dell whatevers. So, uh, yeah, this is a gaming rig, and that's all the lights, and that's basically it. So, next week's video will be a video about Hackintoshing it, turning it into a Hackintosh, all that kind of good stuff. I have Lion, and I have Snow Leopard, and I have iBoot, and all that stuff from Tony Mac x 86 that forum, so I did get all that software downloads. So I probably will be doing a video in about a week. So with that, guys, hope you like this video. Rate, comment, and subscribe. Check out my website. And um, peace.